I'm going to show you how to make my 12th district pork rib roast. Ooh, I love that. Now, uh, you know, you might say to yourself, what's 12th district? Uh, I was on vacation in France, okay, and I was hanging out in the 12th arrondissement, and I had Cuban food in France, and they were serving this, like, burnt ends pork with a really yummy, sweet, but tangy curry rub that I love to put on pork. So now I'm gonna show you how to do it on the rib. Usually on a rib roast, you're gonna get about six to eight ribs, and it's a pork roast. And look at it, really pretty, looking good. So just olive oil. You don't even need salt and pepper. That's gonna come later, all the flavor. I like to sear it. People are like, does it lock in the flavor or not? Um, to me, it's more about creating a little bit more of a rough and hardened surface. So when I get all of the uh, seasoning onto it, they really stick. But obviously, you like to get a little bit of that fat crispy, you know what I mean? And get a little bit of color as well. All right, do not ignore the underbelly or the backside of our ribs. So just again, olive oil. And I know you might be tempted, but don't worry about the salt and pepper. We're gonna build a flavorful rub that's gonna go on our pork roast. Okay, so I've got the grill set. You're gonna put this right over the direct heat, 400 degrees, because we're searing. We wanna get this nice and charred. I'm just gonna pick this up with both tongs and get this. You know, I like to go fat side down first, obviously, huh? And then you just kind of rotate. All right, look at that, baby. Now, you see, I've already got one over here. You can use the same tongs. Don't worry about it, because you're not done cooking this yet. Get that on there. Cover this baby up. <laughs> but you don't want to eat it yet, right? Because we just seared it, so the outside looks like it's cooked, but on the inside, it's not so much. So let me build this rub for you. So I'm going to brush this with a little bit of Dijon mustard. You don't have to go heavy, but it really helps hold on to the spice rub that we're going to make. Actually, it was a rainy day just like this, I'll never forget. And we didn't want to go, you know, far into the city to get something to eat. And I was like, well, what about that little Cuban place down the street? And you say to yourself, but I'm in France. <laughs> All right, completely coated. Let's build this rub. Okay, simply put, this is, to me, one of the best rubs you can put on pork. We're gonna start with some turmeric. Beautiful color, a little bit of Hungarian paprika, a little bit smoky and spicy. And again, you already know, one of my favorite ingredients, uh, some cumin, a little bit of onion powder, some garlic powder, a little chili powder. Hey, if you've got some ancho chili powder, go for it. Some salt. And then I like to come in and crack in some black pepper. Ooh, look at that. It's got red peppercorn in it as well. I'll take it. All right, so just mix this up. That's a big chunk of meat, so it needs a big chunk of rub on the outside to give that flavor, right? It's all about that crust you develop when you sear it. All right, so look at how beautiful and flavorful that is. So colorful. You might say to yourself, what's Cuban about this? I have no idea. I've never been to Cuba. I just know it was at a Cuban restaurant in France. So it was all messed up, okay? But delicious. Get that one in there. Now see how that just kind of hangs out? That's some good old spackle, that Dijon mustard. So on the other side, remember we always say more than one side of our meats, make sure you completely coat and then realize what's on our sheet right here when I roll this back over is gonna get that contact space with it. And then right back onto the grill over the indirect heat of the grill. Now, this time you'll notice I'm putting it rib side down, okay? And then I'm sprinkling over a little piece that my tongs took off. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna close this up. And while this cooks and comes to temperature, at the very end when this is done cooking, I like to spritz it because that recipe that I tasted when I was at that place in France, it had like a tangy sweet thing going on. So in my water here, I'm building a spritz for later. And in this water, it's just gonna be some sugar and some lime juice. Just whisk it up. All right, I'm gonna let this sugar dissolve. Remember, I got the pork loin in here, 350 degrees, 
on the indirect part of the heat for the grill, okay? And that's gonna cook up to about 145 degrees, and that's gonna be the perfect temp to pull it off, rest it, and slice it. Look at all these juicy goodness bits and pieces I can't wait to nibble on. But first, the way to finish this off is to hit it with a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of tang, just a kiss. So I'm going to spray it with my spritz. Very simple. Look at that sheen, OK? I'm going to show you how to tint my pork roast, OK? Just going to get it out. Oh, look at that. Mm, 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 mm. Look at that pork roast, OK? So very important. Let me explain why you tent. Imagine this is very hot and the juices inside are boiling between all the folds of meat and all that stuff, right? So if you slice, they're gonna boil out. But if you let it rest to where they're just simmering and hanging, when you slice this pork roast, it is just gonna be so juicy and tender because the juice retains itself within the actual roast, okay? A little windy out here, but I've done this before. Tongs are your friend, all right? So I'm gonna let this hang out for about uh, 20 minutes or so. Let me show you what our roast looks like, my 12th district roast, after it's tinted for about 20 minutes or so. Wow! Ooh. Wow! You saw that steam rise, it's still nice and warm. Don't worry about it not being nice and hot for you when you're ready to eat. Look at this. It depends, you wanna do two or one, but I like to go through and Cut one. Look at that. Look at how juicy that is. Remember, tinting is the key. It's glossy on there. Yeah, it's it beautiful. Like, looks like a nice, robust bark on there, Sonny. Perfectly cooked. That 145 stop temperature after we let it roast on the grill at 350 degrees over the indirect heat is perfection.